Hey guys, I'm Tom Tech Chap, and I've been living with this, the Meta Quest 3 for well, the best part of a month now. And I wanted to share some sort of longer term impressions now that uh, there's been a couple more games released, there's been a few more updates. I've been having a great time with this thing, which makes its flaws just even more frustrating. So here's the good, the bad, and everything else you need to know before you consider buying a Quest 3. I will also put a link to this in the description below, and if you do find this video helpful, then a cheeky little like and subscribe would be lovely. Okay, let's start with some positive vibes. And after a few weeks with this guy, it's obvious the Quest 3 is the best all-round VR and MR headset for the money. If you already have a Quest 1 or 2, then this is mostly a big upgrade. And if you want an excuse to jump back into VR or try out MR, mixed reality, or just want a pretty good value PC VR headset that's also great for standalone apps and games, then nothing beats this, flaws and all. Pop it onto your head and immediately you'll see the higher res screens and the clearer pancake lenses make everything so much sharper than the Quest 2, even in games that haven't had a Quest 3 upgrade. That is very impressive. And in fact, things are so clear now that actually low res textures and blocky geometry in games are actually more obvious. It's also much easier to stay in the focus sweet spot, meaning there's less eye strain, and the larger 110 degree field of view, up from 97 last year, means better immersion thanks to the extra peripheral vision. Plus there's two and a half times more graphics power on tap thanks to the latest Qualcomm Snapdragon chip, and also setting up your play area with the new depth sensor is much quicker. Mixed reality games look great with the new color pass-through, the controllers are smaller and lighter and now get some great haptic feedback, and just the whole interface is nice and slick and easy to use. And as the ecosystem has matured, we now have a pretty decent library of apps and games which are genuinely fun and less tech demo-y than they used to be. So that all sounds great, what's the problem? Well, there's a couple of things which I'll come to, but the first one, the main one I guess is the price. The Quest 3's had a pretty serious price hike over the Quest 2, and also to get the best experience out of this, you need to buy some add-ons, which is gonna just add to the cost as well. And so it's become less of a fun impulse buy that perhaps you could get away with with uh, the Quest 2 or the Quest 1. Now you really have to think, do I need this? Am I gonna spend the same amount of money as a PS5 on a Quest 3? But I'll come back to all that, sticking with the positive stuff. And the second reason to buy one of these is because it's just so versatile. Now, standalone VR and to some extent MR gaming is still like the bread and butter of the Quest 3, but the extra clarity, the better graphics performance, and that significantly improved pass-through actually makes it a pretty compelling, dedicated uh, PC VR headset, whether it's wired or wireless. I've been having a great time replaying Half-Life Alex, and the virtual desktop is a great way of working or playing PC games on a big screen. And of course, watching movies on this virtual big screen is a fantastic experience. VR workout games are great and actually make exercising more fun. And I could maybe see myself using this while traveling, but it's the MR, the mixed reality experiences that are genuinely new here. And also on the whole, very impressive. And this is thanks to the Quest 3's new color pass-through cameras that just make all the difference. Although they're not perfect, sometimes you do get some weird distortion and things do get much grainier in low light. You can play virtual board games, you can fight aliens or somewhat unconvincing zombies that actually break into your room, or even learn piano, although sadly not at the same time. And just being able to move around these virtual objects in your room is really immersive. You can watch stuff in the headset while maybe doing housework, and the new depth sensor is also key here, as it keeps track of the headset's position so virtual objects stay in the same place because you can use this as a massive virtual monitor at your desk, or anywhere really. You can use hand tracking, the controllers, or a physical mouse and keyboard, and I like the fact you can keep a separate browser window open in the Quest home screen just off to one side. Although I do much prefer using the pass-through to virtual desktops though, it's much more comfortable. That said, I do still think Xreal's new Air 2 or Air 2 Pro AR glasses are more comfortable for longer working sessions or watching a movie, even if they're not so versatile. But essentially we're talking about a pair of sunglasses versus a headset. And you do kind of have to wonder how many convincing, high quality MR experiences are we going to get considering only the just launched Quest 3 has this full color pass through. You know, it's a very small market that will actually own one of these for developers to get on board and create uh, applications and games for. Perhaps as the Apple Vision Pro comes out early next year that we will see more developers jump on board and create these really convincing uh, MR experiences. But for now, there just isn't a whole lot to really sink your teeth into. But let's talk about the graphics because together with the new cameras and sensors, inside we have the Qualcomm Snapdragon XR2 Gen 2 chip, which provides that two and a half times boost in graphics performance over the Quest 2. 
but the thing is, only a handful of games have actually taken advantage of the extra power so far, ranging from a basic resolution and frame rate bump up to 90 or the experimental 120Hz, which still makes a massive difference, all the way up to a full graphics overhaul like we get in Red Matter 2. And together with the clearer optics, the high resolution textures, and the better lighting and effects, it all adds up to make a big visual difference to the games. It's good to see you, thanks for coming out. So while I've been trying out plenty of the updated titles and there are more incoming, it's still hard to say just how many games will take full advantage of that extra power. Dungeons of Eternity's Quest 3 Enhanced Graphics mode does look better and has nicer lighting, but it's not exactly night and day. And I can't wait for the Walking Dead Saints and Sinners graphics update, as right now the clearer image on the Quest 3 makes it look pretty bad. Next up, games. And this is going to be the main reason, for me at least, that unlike most VR headsets that just start gathering dust after a couple of weeks and sit in my drawer, that it's going to make me keep coming back to this. And so far, while it's only been a month, I've actually played this most days. It's so bizarre that we've got a seventh guest game. I remember when I played the original a million years ago, it scared the hell out of me. And now I'm in it, which is even scarier. Definitely quite immersive, even if it's not like the highest quality. I just forget that I can move around, crouch, look around. I haven't got a cable behind my back, which obviously is a huge benefit compared to most other headsets. And I've been loving hand-to-hand -hand combat in Blade and Sorcery Nomad, and also the co-op in Dungeons of Eternity. Cool. Aspire 2 with its MR mode is a good stealthy Metal Gear style fun, and the brand new Ghostbusters Rise of the Ghost Lord is kind of fun-ish. I've played all three, I expect you to die, escape room puzzlers and love them all. I've been struggling my way through Resident Evil 4 and I can't wait to get my hands on Asgard's Wrath 2 and also Assassin's Creed Nexus. And it is worth remembering you can get a refund on any purchase so long as it's within 14 days and you've played less than two hours. Just be aware that a lot of people have been complaining that the mic on the Quest 3 is pretty awful, so for multiplayer you'll probably want a Bluetooth or USB-C alternative. Great job! Now from a design point of view, I definitely appreciate how much more compact the new Quest 3 is. Uh, surprisingly, it does actually weigh a little bit more than the Quest 2, uh, but they've improved the weight distribution, so it actually feels like it's less droopy on the sort of, less front heavy on the front of your face, which I do appreciate. Although, it is still heavier than I would like, and I find after about 15 minutes, I do start to kind of feel it on my head a little bit. Definitely more suited to short bursts of use, especially with a battery, which we'll come to in a second. But one thing I do appreciate is the IPD adjustment is much simpler, and you can adjust the lens distance if you wear glasses, and you can also tilt the headset so it sits comfortably on your face. But I still find this facial interface a little bit cheap feeling, not particularly premium. And you will definitely want to switch this out to something that's easier to clean if you are going to use this for longer gaming Beat Saber sessions or if you're going to work out in this and get all sweaty. Plus there is quite a bit of light visible around my nose, which isn't great for darker scenes watching movies. Then there's the head strap. It's not the best and I do still have to find myself adjusting it around my ears and my head every time I put it on. And it just kind of feels like a temporary solution, like it's, it's enough to not have the headset fall off your head, but it just doesn't stick in the same place well enough. It doesn't feel particularly comfortable, it sort of sits on my ears. I don't love it. Also remember, as much as these headsets have improved over the last few years, not everyone can use VR, and a lot of people do feel a bit nauseous using these. It very much depends on your physiology and also the game or app you're using. Uh, I do find myself in some games feeling a little bit queasy. That said, there are usually in-game options to lessen the effect if you are sensitive. Then we have the controllers, which are also much improved. They're lighter, without the usual tracking ring, and there's new haptic feedback. It's not quite PS5 DualSense level, but it still helps get around that uncanny feeling of touching objects in VR. And thanks to a recent update, tracking's been improved as well. Although you can always buy the Pro controllers if you want the absolute best tracking. So the controllers are great. What's not so great, in my experience, is the battery life, which actually also seems to be like a step down even over the Quest 2. I'm getting between an hour and an hour and a half in mixed reality, and at best maybe two, two and a half hours in less demanding apps and games. It really doesn't last very long, which actually isn't the end of the world deal breaker you may think it is, because to be honest, I mostly use this for like half an hour, 45 minutes, as I say, these sort of quick short bursts, because at that point I'm starting to feel maybe a little bit nauseous, or the weight is sort of getting to my face. So I've never really had an issue where I'm like, I want to be in this for two and a half hours and had a battery issue, but it's always in the back of your mind, and I do have to sort of plug this in at the end of every session just for that sort of peace of mind. Now you can add the Elite Strap with battery, which also seems to have some reliability issues, or a third-party battery head strap, but then that's just an extra cost. 
And the funny thing is, Meta knows that its users aren't that impressed with the battery because they've actually added a sort of reduced graphics mode, which improves the situation a bit. But if you're buying a new headset partly for the better graphics, probably not going to want to turn them down. Well, this is fun. Anyway, let's talk about the price, because on the one hand, compared to Meta's own Quest Pro and also some other PC VR headsets, the Quest 3 feels like an absolute bargain. And it's also like 15% of the price of Apple's Vision Pro headset, although no doubt that will be higher end. But then as I say, the 60% price rise over the Quest 2 to the 3 just takes it away from that kind of fun impulse purchase to a full fat console or you know low to mid level laptop price. The 512 gigabyte model is over 600 pounds. And if you go with the Elite head strap with the battery, the carry case and the charging dock, you're up to a grand and that's before you've bought any games. And that is a real issue because you're not going to get developers create new games and apps and invest in high quality games if there isn't a user base of this, if not enough people buy it. So from a hardware and a technical perspective, I absolutely love this thing, although it could be a little bit lighter and I don't love the head strap. But I think the quality of the lenses, the MR experience mostly is very impressive. But I just don't know how many people would actually want to spend this kind of money for that experience. But if you know you love the Quest, or for new users, if you feel like you're going to throw yourself into everything this has to offer and maybe don't mind modding it a little bit, despite the more expensive price tag, it's hard to argue this isn't the best overall VR headset. Alternatively, see if you can get yourself a good deal on the Quest 2. Tons of these are going on eBay now as people are upgrading. Also, you've got the Pico 4 as a good alternative to the Quest 2, although I'm more excited about the Pico 5. And of course, I am very excited to see what Apple will do with the Vision Pro headset, although for three and a half thousand dollars, that is very much a pro niche device to start with at least. But what do you think? Would you be tempted to buy a Quest 3? Have you already bought one? And if so, let me know what you think of it in the comments below. I'll also leave a link in the description if you do want to check this out. And if you've got any questions, drop a comment as well. Thank you so much for watching guys, and I will see you next time right here on the Tech Chat.